Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Hall with AARP Missouri, and I'd like to welcome you to our very first Strength and Balance Conditioning class, part of AARP's Moving It Fitness series. Now, six weeks seems too short, so this class will be eight weeks long. Strength and Balance Conditioning is a new offering for us, and our instructor will explain more in a minute. But I will say that our class has some interval and repetition work. Now, after our strength and balance class runs its eight weeks, there we'll have yoga conditioning also with Tyler. Wave, Tyler. Hi, Tyler. Hi. This class is suitable for many levels of fitness. However, you know your own limitations. Please do not try to go beyond what you know is right for you. If you have any concerns with your doctor, check with your doctor before participating in this or any other AARP fitness offering. AARP Missouri also offers another live class called Forever Fit, and we have links to past programs like Tai Chi that you can participate in from the recordings. You can find all those links at aarp.org slash moving it. All of our programming is created with people 50 plus in mind, but it's good for anyone of any age, anywhere. To learn more about these opportunities, please go to aarp.org slash moving it. You'll also find information about our new sweepstakes for a Fitbit Versa 3 and other prizes. If you have not done that, make sure that you do it today. Now, AARP realizes that our fitness series, like strength and balancing, conditioning, can be great options for anyone who may not be able to attend a traditional fitness class, like someone who's a caregiver or someone who has to stay home for health reasons. We also have other resources for caregivers, up-to-date COVID-19 information and technology information at our website, aarp.org slash near you. Now, if this is your first time with an AARP fitness class, which it isn't for any of you, so I can just skip talking to you about this. So everybody, please pin Tyler like you have done before and make sure you're on mute, doesn't apply anymore because we're doing a webinar. So let's just get started with strength and balancing, ba strength and balance conditioning. Our new instructor, our new instructor, our same instructor for our new class will be Tyler Ferguson. Tyler, please take it away. Thank you, Diane. Hi, everybody. It's so glad to, or I'm glad to uh, see some familiar names and have you in our next eight weeks of classes, strength and conditioning, or balance and strength. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's come to standing. Uh, if you remember from our previous classes, I love to work barefoot. So if you're comfortable working barefoot, go ahead and take those shoes and socks right off. If you have an active foot injury or if you're uh, working with plantar fasciitis, which is active right now, it might not feel great uh, to you to be barefoot. But otherwise, shed those uh, shoes, come to standing, bring your feet about hip distance or shoulder distance apart. And then lift and spread your toes and just start to rock back and forth in the mat. So what I want you to do is allow the bottoms of the feet to open up and let the bottoms of the feet make more surface area contact with the floor. So the bottoms of our feet have receptors that communicate with the brain and let us know where we are in space, which is one of the reasons why it's nice to practice our balance work barefoot. So we're sending more information to the brain about our proprioception. Okay. Let's come to standing. And then notice if you have a tendency to lock out your knees. So we just wanna put a slight micro bend in the knees. You don't have to sit back too much. Just notice if you're locking out. Being able to re 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 uh, react and respond in your balance challenges, you're gonna be able to, um, to react if you have a slight bend in the knees and you're not just relying on stacking your bones. From here, see if you can pull your feet together. And notice what muscles turn on when you do. Maybe these inner thigh muscles turn on. Now, when I say pull my feet together, it's actively, right? So my feet aren't actually moving. I'm just creating that pulling sensation in the body. And then release that, let it go, wiggle the legs. Now, see if you can tear the ground apart. So I'm using my feet. I'm pushing them away from each other, feeling the muscles turn on in the uh, glutes. So that's a way to keep your legs a little bit more active in the workout, either tearing the ground together or, or apart and then firming up your glutes. So try to do that. See if you can lift and firm your glutes here and then pull your belly button towards your spine. So that'll help you start to tone the abdominal muscles. And the three main players of the core are your glutes, your abs, and your lats. 
So the way we turn on our lats, do this with me. Bring your arms out here, like give a big metal bar, all right? Now, get nice and strong. I want you to bend that metal bar like a horseshoe. Boom. And then you might notice the, your lat muscle turning on when you pack your shoulders. So those are the three main players in your core. I'm going to reference them throughout our workout. We're going to start today with that active stance. And we're going to work in our toes. So our arms can be down to our sides. Try to lift your toes, separate them, and place them down on the mat. And then just keep doing that a couple times. Lift and separate and place them down. And what I'd like for you to do is notice this. Place your toes down. Take your awareness inside. Feel if you have our notice the big toe mound, the mound under the piggy toe, and the heel. So we've talked about this in other classes. Do you want to have your weight evenly distributed in those three points of each foot? Okay. So now, when you lift and spread your toes, can you maintain that triangle in each foot and put them down? What I want you to notice is, are you rocking as you lift your toes? Each time you lift your toes, are you losing your balance? Or are you able to move into the triangles of the feet and lift and separate the toes and place them down? All right. So I know this seems simple, but... Even having that awareness and control can influence your balance. Let's do this. Lift, let's lift all 10 toes, spread them out nice and wide, and then try to tap your piggy toe. So we're waking up the feet. We're waking up that uh, communication with the brain, the proprioceptive awareness. And then these are lower leg muscles that are operating the toes. So we're just getting into the lower legs. Let's try this. Lift the big toe. Reach out to your piggy toe. See if you can tap your piggy toe. You might already notice some cramping or some sensation in the feet as you use these toes, I mean these muscles. Now, let's switch it up. Let's go big toe, reach, piggy toe. I'm doing my hands to mimic it so you can see. Piggy to, big toe, piggy toe, big toe, piggy. Notice I'm not rolling in and rolling out. I'm simply isolating the muscles of the feet. Now, these toes that pass through the feet into the lower leg and then release and let it go. Shake it all up. Now, lift all 10 toes. Notice the toe pads, press the toe pads down on the ground, and then slightly draw the toe pads back toward your heel. So you make these little toe knuckles. You might feel the arches of the feet lift, start to pull the feet together, feel the inner thighs wake up. If you can lift your pelvic floor, if you, the pelvic floor looks like this, so just bring the muscles together, a little lift. Start to firm the tissues in the belly, and then pack the shoulders, nice and strong. Circle sweep the arms up, reach overhead. Inhale, exhale the arms back down. One more time. Inhale the arms up, reach overhead. You don't have to clasp your hands, and you can keep your arms slightly forward if you wish. Start to rotate your pinkies in, pack the shoulders, good. And then rotate and bring your hands down. Bring your hands right up to your chest here. Draw your chin down to your chest as you reach the back of your head up to the ceiling, putting your chin into or your neck into forward flexion, and then lift open the chin, open up the front of the throat. Try to stay long in the back of the neck. Good. I feel a sneeze coming on, so it's probably going to be really loud when I do it. I'll try not to. I'll try to warn you or maybe even make it go away. Draw the chin down to the chest one more time and lift the chin up to the sky. So we're working our neck, our cervical spine, preparing that for our work. Hands come down to the sides, lift your left earlobe up to the sky. So you notice that'll create a nice stretch between the left ear and the shoulder. It's also like bringing your right ear down to your shoulder, but you might stay a little longer in the neck when you do it. To exit this pose, chin comes down, bend the knees a little bit, and then lift your right earlobe up to the sky. Shoulders are down, they're in pack, maybe your arms are straight like you're putting swords or shovels down into the ground. Now let's move with the breath. Inhale, chin down, bend the knees. Exhale, left ear below, ear lobe lifts. Inhale, exhale, chin down, bend the knees. Right ear lobe lifts. That's a lot to say, ear lobe lifts. Say that fast. And then last time, switch it up. And chin down, switch it up. 
and come right back into the center. I'm gonna do one more uh, exercise with the ankles before I move on to the rest of the spine. I want you to roll up one foot into what I call a foot fold. So you'll notice that the big toe mount and the piggy toe mount are on the ground, but the heel is lifted and the knee is tracking forward when I do this. So just lift and lower, just working the foot fold of one foot. And then it's up to you how much pressure you push into the ball of the foot as you lift the knee. You might feel the calf muscle turn on and off or fire as you're doing this. But I just want you to feel this motion in your foot. This is part of the mechanics of when you walk, right? When you leave the back of your foot, you're rolling up into your foot fold. Switch, and then we'll work the other side. Just lift and lower the heel, one leg at a time. Just working the foot fold of that foot, feeling the big toe mound and the piggy toe mound as the heel lifts and lowers. All right. Great work, guys. That concludes the footwork for today. So I'm going to move my step out of the way and continue on with our spinal work. So we already did our neck. Let's work on our thoracic spine. Bring your hands together, clasp your fingers, take your pointer fingers, and push your fingers away. You're gonna pack your shoulders down and push your fingers away and take your eyes and look them right at your thumbs. All right, so you might feel your back open up and your shoulder blades are separating. So there's space between the shoulder blades. You can firm your low belly in, bring your belly button towards the spine. Take a breath into this. Now separate your hands and move into chest expansion. So keep tension in the elbow and the wrists. Open up your chest. Bring your hands back behind your head if that feels safe for you. Notice your shoulder blades are coming together here. You're getting a nice stretch in the pec and the front line of the body. Inhale here. Exhale, hands go back together, clasp, point your fingers, round your upper back spine to the back of the room. Look at your thumbs. Pack your shoulders here, separating the shoulder blades, creating space and stretch on the back side of the body here. And then one more time, separate the hands, move into chest expansion, lift the heart, lift the gaze, firm your glutes here and draw your belly button towards your spine. And exhale, bring your arms down to the sides. Go one more thing in the neck, I forgot this one. Let's do our neck glides, chin down, and then back up and in. So if you've done mobility work with me before, you've done neck glides. If you're new to this, you just did yoga with me. You're drawing your chin down and forward and then up and back, like you're pressing your head in the back against a wall. And then pause. We're gonna do neck translations. So take your ear over to a shoulder and then your ear over to a shoulder. These are called neck translations. If you've never done these with me before, or even if you have, they can be very challenging to find. And it's not uncommon if you're trying to do this and absolutely nothing is happening. Almost every client that comes in the studio when I ask them to do these neck translations, nothing happens. They can't figure out how to make a move. That's fine, no problem. Here's what I'm gonna have you do. Set up these little goal posts and then split the difference. Go forward and over, come back and in, forward and over, come back and in. So just split the difference and then you'll begin to wake up the musculature that can eventually put you into your neck glides. All right, so we've worked the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, place your hands on your hips. We're just gonna tilt the pelvis forward, put an arch on our back, I like to call this sassy. And then we're gonna tuck our tail, feel the belly button work towards the spine, and I call that cashew. So just work between sassy and cashew. And it's important that you have a connection to your pelvis and you can find movement in your pelvis. So that's another common thing I find in the studio. Um, often with men, have an inability to rotate and make this connection and movement with your pelvis. So see if you can find that today. I like to think about having like little flashlights on the front of my hips, and then I'm gonna turn the flashlights down to the floor, and then I turn the flashlights forward. All right, so just having that movement, and that awareness in your pelvis. Also notice how your low belly informs if you bring your low belly into your spine, that informs this work. All right, that's our spine. Let's move into our mobility work. Bring your arms forward. Again, try not to leak elbow in the, uh, leak energy in the elbow or the wrists. Take the fists, punch them forward, elevate your shoulder, bring it back and pack it down on the back. Other side, elevate, 
and pack. Right side, elevate and pack. Left side, elevate, depress. That's technically what it is. So it's scapular elevation and depression, scapular elevation and depression. So get that mobility going in the shoulder blades. Maybe bring your awareness down. Are you locking out your knees? Are you on the triangle bottoms, the three points of each foot? Are you firm in your glutes? Is your low belly button pulled back to the spine, turned on? Good. And then let's open up and do a little bit of shoulder screws. So I'm gonna go right back into that shoulder elevation, but now I'm gonna internally rotate. Look over the opposite arm. Oh, that feels so delicious, wringing that out. Then take that on the other side. Elevate, find an internal rotation. Look over the opposite arm. You might even feel this delicious stretch in the stretch, uh, uh, neck. And then a couple more. So we're gonna elevate the scapula, internally rotate. Now reach and look across. Unpack all of that. Elevate, internally rotate. You can pack it back down and then reach across and look. So hopefully you're getting some nice um, stretch in the shoulders and the arms from that. We'll move down to the hips, place your hands on your hips. These are called hip roots. I'm gonna take my left hip. And I'm gonna take it back to the back corner of the room. So when I do that, my trunk is hinging a little bit. So the trunk can come forward, pause there. And notice if you feel Maybe a little stretch or sensation on the outside of the hips. <sighs> Breathe here. Now, as you come out of it, we're gonna cue this in our squat. Stand tall, squeeze your glutes and lengthen through the spine like you're doing a plank, right? So nice and tall. You're not arching your back, just a nice tall plank. And then take your hips back in the other direction, back in the other corner of the room. Good. So you can move around and see if you can get that stretch and the outside of your hip, and then squeeze your glutes, draw your hips forward, stand tall, and send your hips back into that original place. It's gonna change here, so just listen up for a second. Now, staying in this position, I want you to swish your tail across the back of the room. You might feel a little stretch in the hamstrings. Pause over on this other side, and then swish your tail across the back of the room. Pause on this original side. Now we're gonna turn that into a big circle. Send your hips forward, squeeze the glutes. This time you can let the heart lift a little bit and arch the back just a little bit more like a back bend and then send it back to the corner. Swish, come forward, tiny back bend. So these big juicy hip circles, maybe you're feeling some movement or some sensation in the hamstrings, bottoms of the feet, Right, feet are flat on the ground. We're not rolling on the inside or the outside edges. Pause back in this back position and take your circles in the other direction. I'm watching the clock, guys. We got this. So after our mobility work, we'll get into the workout. But we wanna have this big juicy warm up, reminding you to move into your workout slowly and take the time to do all this work for tissue compliance. Yeah, so basically this huge party is gonna happen in the body in the workout. We just wanna make sure everybody gets invited to the party. All right, <clears throat> that's it. Last mobility exercise before we go, you might use a chair for balance. I'm gonna put the weight in one leg. I'm not gonna lock out the knee, so soft bend in the knee. And I'm just turning my knee internal and external. I'm cueing the knee, but what's happening is the movement is happening in the hip. Notice my trunk is not rotating at all, right? I could go further by moving my trunk but I'm missing the point of the exercise. So I'm just isolating this movement to the hip. Place your foot down, find it on the other side. Stand up nice and tall without locking out the knee. And then find your internal and external rotation in this leg. So we got hip roots. We've got this internal and external rotation of the hip. We've got our lateral flexion of the spine, our neck glides, chasing shoulders. I think we got all of our mobility work in to begin our day. So what I'm gonna do with you right now is I'm gonna show you the five exercises we're gonna do today. We're gonna practice the exercises together and then I'm gonna get my handy dandy little timer and then we are gonna work for 60 seconds in our exercise and then rest for 20 seconds. I'm gonna show you how to work in your recovery breath and then we're gonna go right back into the exercise. 
At the end of our five rounds, we'll take a moment to discuss progressing or regressing the exercises, and then we're gonna do a second round. So first, let me demonstrate the exercises. Our first exercise is simply gonna be a squat, okay? So squat is one of those functional movements for life. We need to squat when we sit down in the chair or sit down to use the restroom. So it's nice to pattern the squat and have the strength to be able to maintain it. So the first movement on a squat, take the tips of your fingers, push them into your hips, and your hips should go back behind your heels. So let's just practice that. Hips go behind heels, and then bring your shoulders over hips. Hips behind heels, shoulder pitches forward, and then squeeze glutes, stand tall, all right? So that's the first part of a squat is the hips. Second, hips go back, then the knees bend, all right? And what I'm trying to do here, so I'm trying to keep my chest lifted so that the angle of my torso is similar to the angle of my legs. I might put my arms out as a little counterbalance. I'm gonna stand up tall, squeeze the glutes at the top, and then lower down. So practice this with me, stand tall. Now, you wanna get some more muscle thrown at this, start to tear the ground apart, right? Keep that tearing, feel the muscles turn on when you tear. Now lower down and then press up. We haven't talked about the breath yet. So let me add some ideas on how to breathe. You can do what's called force level breathing. So you can exhale down, exhale up, exhale down, exhale up, or inhale down, exhale, inhale down, exhale. All right, that's your squat. You guys got it? All right, we're gonna move on. Next one is called stories claps. This is for your shoulders. If you have shoulder injuries, I'm gonna give you a modification. Otherwise, take your feet, you're gonna stand wide and slightly turn your toes out and then firm up your glutes right here. Bring your belly button to your spine and then bring your arms out like big wings, reach, reach, reach. All you're gonna do is rotate your palms up. Notice how you feel the lats turn on the back and then turn the palms down. So we just go up and down, up and down. Okay, so this might seem really easy, but after about 20 seconds, you're gonna to start to feel some heel, heel, heat building in your delts. After 20 seconds, I'm gonna invite you to clap and then press down, clap, press down. If you have a shoulder injury and you don't wanna reach your arms up overhead, your option is to go punch forward, punch out, punch forward and out. So I don't know what injuries I'm dealing with, so I'm just gonna trust you guys to do your best um, with making a choice there. And I'll give you all the cues, uh, choose, clues, um, cues. <laughs> and then my last one in this uh, shoulder series is you're gonna pull the rope up and down. So practice that with me, pulling the rope, firming the glutes, belly button in. Again, if you're not reaching above the shoulders, you have a shoulder injury, you're just gonna go right back to your ups and downs, all right? The way you exit out of this, toes in, heels in, toes in, heels in, bam, 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 bam. That's exercise number two. Third exercise, grab your chair, have a seat. And then what I want you to do is place your back against the chair and then scoot your hips forward a little bit. So it's up to you to figure out what the distance is. Make your back nice and flat and long, firm your belly, firm your glutes, and then sit up. Lean back, keep all this tissue contracted in the front, and then sit up. Hands can go down on the thighs, sit up. So make sure the distance your hips are from the chair makes sense for you. A common misalignment in this is to lead with the chin or try to jerk forward using the spine. So we wanna keep the chin in alignment, try to isolate to using the front of the core or the front of the body, and then sit nice and tall. Chair sit-ups. All right, guys, cool beans. Exercise number four, we start to move into our balance. You might keep your chair close by for this one. And there's a theme with chairs. So you're gonna come into your chair pose. We know how to hinge first and then bend the knees. Here's your chair pose. You might bring your hands to prayer. So practicing your chair pose, that might be enough for you today. If you want a little bit more, I'm gonna invite you to shift the weight into one leg and tap and touch. Tap 
and touch. We did this in mobility, I think, one week, tap and touch. You're gonna reach right behind you, tap and touch. So 30 seconds, you can stay on that leg, and then I'll tell you when to switch. You might notice this leg starting to fatigue from the work. If that leg's fatiguing, you can put both feet down and rest. If this is too much, you can stand up, wiggle, wiggle, rest, and go right back into it. All right, after 30 seconds, we switch weight and then go with a new leg. So that's our fourth exercise. That's our balance exercise. Then we have a rotational and balance exercise to end with our fifth exercise. We're gonna step more into a lunge position, step your right foot back, and then notice we practice that foot fold. So notice I'm in a foot fold now, my heel is lifted as opposed to having this external rotation in the heel down. We commonly do that. It's harder to turn on the glute with your heel down. So if you can figure out how to bring your heel up like the foot fold and then firm and tone that glute, maintaining that toneness in the glute, bring the shoulders over the hips as opposed to pitching forward. So that's a, that pinching is not using your core. Bring the shoulders over the hips, firm up your core, bring the belly button to the spine, soft bend in the front knee, and then bring your hands forward like you're pulling a bow. Now my left leg is forward, so my left hand is holding the bow. My right hand are pulling open the strings. I'm gonna start to feel this rotation in the body. I'm rotating my rib cage, reaching the hand back, looking back for a balance challenge. Ah, and then bringing my arm right back down, peel open the bow. So here are the mechanics of this. I'm rotating in the trunk. So that's where I wanna feel this work. So I might feel my obliques assisting with the rotation. The other thing that might happen is my front knee might want to collapse and move with me. So we don't want that to happen in the front knee. We would turn that front glute, keep the knee moving to the outside piggy toe as we find our rotation. After 30 seconds, you're gonna step the back foot forward, the other foot back, get yourself set up, firm up, turn on that glute, hold your bow, and then peel open to the other side. Bam. Okay. So I can't see anybody. <laughs> So I wanna make sure that you've all had an opportunity to try these five exercises. And if you haven't had an opportunity to try them, not to worry, we're gonna uh, do this almost the exact same workout next week. So we'll see how it goes this week. <clears throat> I'm gonna coach you through all these exercises and show you what we're doing. Our first exercise is the squat. I got 60 seconds on the clock. Remember, it's the hip hinge that you start with and you wanna keep your, Trunk lifted, don't worry about going too low. All right, ready? All right, guys, ready? Three, two, one. Let's start squatting, all right? Maybe the arms come forward. And then bring your hands back as you stand tall. Bring your arms down to the ground as you stand tall. It doesn't matter. I like the arms forward because that's a bit of a counterbalance. That helps me sink down. So you wanna have good crown to coccyx alignment here. So if you're looking at the screen the whole time, you might be opening up your throat and putting your neck into a difficult situation. So take your eye gaze down. That was the halfway mark, by the way. So have this crown to coccyx alignment. So the eye gaze is gonna look down just a tiny bit as you squat. Inhale, lower, exhale, press up. As you press up, you're pressing down in the heel, squeezing, firming the glutes, squeezing the glutes at the top. Common theme, use those glutes and rest here. This is how we recover. Long inhale, pause, exhale. Shoulders and wrists bounce. Let's move on to our next exercise. It's the shoulders, take your feet wide. Turn the toes out, firm the glutes, draw the belly button to the spine. And then we're just gonna go up. So it's external and internal rotation. Now, you can just be kind of a noodle doing this, right? So we wanna create tension, that full fascial tension, reaching the fingertips to opposite sides of the room as you're working your glutes right now, as you're stabilizing in the core. So all these exercises are asking you to stabilize the core. Let's move to our claps. Inhale, exhale down. Firm the belly in, 
Keep the core, uh, keep the glutes turned on nice and toned. So now you might be able to, you might start feeling the heat in the shoulders. Again, no pain. Not allowed to have pain in this exercise. And then our last one, let's climb the ropes. If you have a shoulder injury, let's go back to the original one where you're just moving from internal to external rotation. Good, toe heel to feet in. Take a long inhale, pause, exhale. <laughs> let's move to the chair and set ourselves up for our chair sit-ups. Have a seat down and then take your time to fix, uh, figure out where your distance are, your hips from your chair. Go ahead and place your back in the chair. Your feet should be on the ground. Your, your core is toned, your glutes are turned on. If you don't have a chair this week, you'll know next week. You can just hold out on this one and then I'm gonna start my timer. Three, two, one. Sit up nice and tall. If you start to fatigue during this, Sit your hips closer. And then if you don't feel like the work is enough for you, you can send your hips away. Notice if you have a tendency to strain or lead with the chin, you wanna move from the crown to the coccyx, from the crown of the head to the tail, you wanna move that like a piece of wood, like, um, like a solid object that doesn't bend. Good, you can move at whatever pace you want to. You don't have to match my pace. That little doo-doo-doo, that was the halfway point. If you need to rest before you do any more, that's fine. Notice if you're feeling the work in the low back. We don't wanna feel the work in the back. We wanna feel the work in the front. So draw your belly button to your spine more to try to take the work out of your back. Good, take a moment here. We're done. Inhale, exhale, we'll come to standing. Stand up nice and tall. If you wanna use your chair for balance for this next exercise, you can. Otherwise, come into your chair pose. And if you wanna take your steps, you can go ahead and start to move into your steps. That one behind, that curtsy one behind, that can be really challenging. Stay on the same leg with me. You'll probably have a chance to do about two rounds if you stay on the same leg. If the chair pose is just challenging enough, meet yourself exactly where you are today. Let's switch sides and then moving into the other side. Take a moment to get yourself set up. Something that's important about balance is your drishti or your gazing point. So it's where you're looking right now. So you might wanna take your eyes off the screen because I'm moving in the screen and fixate at something that's completely still in the room, maybe just below or just above your screen or on the floor out in front of you. Fixate there, that'll help with your balance. Come to standing, we're done, that's it. Take a long inhale in, pause. Exhale it out. One more round in this group. I'm just going to turn your sideways for the view. Step your right foot back, lift your heel, firm your glute, take a bend in the front knee, reach like you have a bow, and then start to peel open. So you notice this is also a balance challenge in addition to a rotational exercise. So the balance is when the eye gaze starts to move around in the room, it's a little bit harder for the body to balance. So before we talked about having that fixed point that you looked at, look at, that helps the brain triangulate and know where you are in space. Back foot comes forward, switch sides. Front foot comes back. Now, get yourself set up, firm that back glute, core is engaged, shoulders over hips. Now, you're starting to look across the room and maybe even look back behind. So as you move your focal point, the brain's having to work a little bit harder to triangulate and figure out where you are in space. So that's the balance challenge here. Take your back foot and step it forward. We're done. One more recovery breath. Inhale here. Pause. Exhale it out. 
and we are done with set number one. So my goal for these sets with you is for them to be mindful for you to start to connect to this musculature and build your personal vocabulary and your personal toolbox before we start adding on difficulty to the exercises. With that said, we're gonna do a second round. Here's a couple ways you can bring some challenge into your squat exercise. One thing you can simply do is at the top of your squat, lift your heels. Lower the heels, come into a squat, stand and lift the heels, right? If I find my drishti, if you wanna try this with me and see how that feels in your body, remember when we lower, tear the ground apart and then explode. So that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do with your squat, if, if you wanna bring in more work is just simply grab a dumbbell, maybe three pounds, two, three pounds, maybe five pounds. Bring it right at your solar plexus, at your chest, press the weight away. And bring it right back in. That's an option for you too, if you wanna elevate the exercise. Otherwise, just putting your mind and your body and having a really good functional squat is a perfectly great way. Um, I need to work on my squat, it's not great. So um, I'm just happy continuing to put my mind into my squat. Stories claps, it's pretty much the same there. You can just change the speed or the rate that we go there. On your chair sit-ups, it's just the distance of your seat from the back of the chair to increase that exercise. And then on our balance taps one, uh, you're gonna hover that foot in between your taps rather than touching the ground. See right there, I'm hovering and I'm balancing. So when we get to that, I'll show you the different uh, ways to change that exercise. All right, guys, round two, you ready? It's the squat, figure out which squat you're gonna do. And let's go, let's work on those squats. This time, as you're working on your squats, I really want you to connect to your breath. So I don't care how you breathe, I just wanna make sure you do breathe. Sometimes holding our breath can feel like we're bracing, but it's not a sustainable way to brace. So instead, we wanna keep breathing the exercise and let the muscles do the bracing rather than the pressure, that was halfway, rather than the pressure we feel on the inside from holding the breath. So you might exhale on both phases of the exercise. That's fine. Or you can just exhale on the extension phase or the work phase of the exercise, which would be standing up tall. Here we go, counting it down. That's the end of this round. Pause with me, take a long inhale here. Pause, hold your breath that triggers the parasympathetic nervous system, and then exhale, ch -ch 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 -ch, bounce. That releases all the residual tension in the body. Take the feet wide for stories, claps. Turn the toes out, elevating the arms here. Tone the glutes and tone the belly button in. As you reach and expand your wings, spread your wings, fingertips reaching to the opposite edge of the room. Good. And each time you move into the external rotation, Perhaps you can feel your back muscles working, your lats turn on, and then we're gonna clap for the shoulders that are okay with clapping. Otherwise, you're reaching in front and reaching inside, not taking your hands over your shoulders. So whatever version you pick, go ahead. This overhead one is obviously going to heat up the deltoids a little bit. And then the third exercise in this series, just to give you a break, is climbing your rope. So you're reaching up as high as you can, even tilt to the sides and pull your rope all the way down. Firm the glutes, keep the belly button pulled in, keep breathing, and we're done. Toe heel the feet in, take a long inhale here. Pause, exhale it out. Let's make our way down to our chair. You know where we're going, set yourself up. Set your hips the distance that you want from the chair. And three, two, one, we're gonna go right now. Good. So I really want you to be mindful about this work. It's so important that you're not working into your lower back. 
And if you suspect you are into your lower back and working, I would really love for you to just scoot your hips back and change the distance that you're performing these little sit-ups. This is an opportunity to study the front part of the body. So draw your belly button back in firm. We're halfway there. And then pretend like somebody, you're knitting, you're pulling these front ribs together just to recruit all of that fiber in the front, create that bracing feeling by drawing it inward to the midline or to the spine. And again, breathe. Maybe inhale, lower back, exhale, sit tall. Good, inhale here, exhale. Stand up and we'll move to our next exercise, which is gonna be the chair pose with the tap, uh, taps. So set your hips back into chair pose, bring your hands into prayer, option to stay right here or shift your weight and start your taps. You can touch the ground in between each time if you wish, or you can really challenge your balance today. You can touch, hover, touch, hover, touch. Remember that drishti? Maybe take your eyes off of me and start to find that gazing point, laser focus on that object that isn't moving. Last time, or switch sides is what I mean to say, switch sides. Take a moment to set yourself up and find your balance before you start moving into the exercise. Sometimes when we balance, that's one of those places where we hold our breath. But can you breathe this exercise? Move at the pace that is suitable for you. You're not matching my pace. And we're done. Come up to standing, long inhale in. Pause, exhale, let it go. So our rotations are our last exercise here. So stepping, let's step the left foot back this time. Just the opposite foot. Remember, peel up into your foot fold, firm, firm, firm that glute, shoulders over hips, core is engaged, and then start to find your rotations. So the last set we did, I didn't talk a lot about that front knee. So firm the front glute by feeling the front heel press into the ground and let that connection inform, or inform isn't the word, let that take your knee energetically toward the piggy toe of the front leg. And we're gonna switch. So bring your back leg forward. Switch it up, set yourself up, firm the glute, shoulders have to be over hips, core engaged. So on this side, connect to the heel and the front leg. And as you rotate open, notice if the knee wants to travel, can you use those muscles on the outside of the leg to fight the knee from dropping to the midline? That was it, last one. Step your back foot forward. One more time, long inhale. Pause for just a second at the top, parasympathetic nervous system triggers, and then exhale through the mouth, releasing any residual tension in the body of the exercise. Ba bam, ba bam, bam, we're done. We did two sets, 60 seconds of work, 15 or 20 seconds of rest. Again, this was a mindful and functional exercise, and we can build on those exercises. I just wanted to show you before we get into our cool down, next week I'm gonna introduce a plank and you can use the wall for your plank, right? So you can find a plank on the wall if you wish, or if you wanna make it more challenging, you can plank on the chair. But if you do, I need you to make sure that chair isn't gonna slide across the floor and uh, create a problem. All right, so next week we'll use the chair. If you have a dumbbell, we can bring those in. Otherwise, let's cool it down, guys. Come to standing, inhale the arms up, reach overhead. Exhale the arms down to the sides, soften the knees, and then just find some twists and let the weight of the hands slightly and gently tug at the shoulders. So we did all that shoulder work. We prepared it with our shoulder screws and elevations. And now we're just letting the weight of the hands kind of tug in the tissues, lengthen the tissues. Mm-hmm. 
and then coming to stillness. We could do a little fold here, and a chair could be nice for a fold. Bring the arms up, reach overhead, bring your hands to prayer, and then start to fold. Notice my pelvis tilts when I do a fold. You can pause right here on the chair if you wish. That can feel nice. And then straighten out one leg and bend one knee. Let the head hang heavy. I'm looking at the screen to make sure you can see my legs. So I'm straightening out one leg. I'm bending the opposite knee, letting the head hang heavy. And then switching it out, straightening out opposite leg, bending opposite knee, letting it hang heavy. If you want to bring your hands to the floor, slightly bend both knees. Maybe walk your fingertips over to one side. You might feel that stretch in the hamstrings or the upper part of the legs, maybe the attachments around the knees. Gently walk your fingertips on the ground over to the other side. Breathe, keep breathing. Walk your fingertips back to the center. Drop your seat a little bit more, bring your hands up on your thighs and then press yourself up to standing. Come up nice and slow because your head was below your heart. And then one more time, inhale the arms up, reach overhead. Squeeze the glutes at the top and exhale, let it go. Ba bam, ba bam. It's 11:47. Holy smokes, or 12:47, or 10:47. It's something. It's something 47. It's been a pleasure and an honor to share this workout with you, my friends. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, I'm available to answer them. It might have to be through chat this time, but um, go ahead and ask any questions you may have. Thanks for coming, guys. Appreciate any feedback.